Hi, I am James, Jimmy, Jim, uh, also known as uh, previously Fat Elvis, but now I'm going by the Wheel Elvis with my chariot. Um, I, I use pronouns he and him, um, and I am a cabaret performer slash singer. impersonator. Um, I did that pre-disability and it was something that kind of came back to me after I was told uh, quite bluntly you know your physical ailments won't stop you singing and I thought oh, that's great so I'm gonna keep singing so I took a new name and uh, yeah so I I do some straight singing as it were excuse the pun so lots of churchy things, weddings, I've done funerals, and, uh, but the cabaret stuff tends to be Elvis, and uh, one of my big things I like to do is, is sing non-Elvis songs as Elvis. So uh, when you see Elvis rocking out Chandelier by Sia, it's something to behold. To kind of be able to be part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, you need to be able to get into certain venues to, to meet people be seen, go out, and a lot of the time the venues out there unfortunately don't have the access requirements or availability of um, things that would make it a bit easier for, for disabled people, whether that's people with mobility problems, visually impaired people, uh, deaf people, um, you know, it's, it's, it makes it quite difficult. Once you're kind of within those venues and you're in the community, I, I've found that I've become a bit of a... I'm gonna say it. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a nuisance in other people's eyes because I'm in the way. I'm 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 not small by any means. Um, and when I'm out and about, I'm I make sure that I'm seen. I like to be centre of attention a lot of the time and living life to the fullest. So in some of these smaller venues, you know, I, I do get knocked, shoved, pushed. You'll get the odd tut. As a disabled person, specifically within LGBTQ plus community. Um, we're a bit of a rarity, really. It's like, oh, that, that's that's a bit of a, you know, it's something to be looked upon as much as sort of say, oh, they they they've let them out. They, it's gone out of the box for the day. Um, so some people, you know, it's very welcoming. They want to, you know, they want to make sure you're there having fun and, and you've got what you need. So that's the good side of it. That's that's what I like to focus on. And there's lots of work to be done to make the community more welcoming to people with disabilities um, and maybe welcoming is the wrong word, making them more accessible to people with disabilities. I think I think the welcome is always there with a lot of places, it's just the, the physical things that we need to, to, to access that community. For me it's always about forward planning, um, particularly where I've been invited to venues to perform um, and people know, you know, I'm the wheel Elvis, I perform in a wheelchair and then you get there and it's like oh yeah we're up three flights of stairs you know or you know yeah and, and it's silly silly little things like that um i'm quite lucky in that i i'm not restricted too much yet i do have some mobility I, if i've got crap yeah, i've got crutches I, I can move about um but again that's where the forward planning comes if, if someone if a venue says to me yes we want you to perform but you know we do have some steps or, or we have this or we have that then i know in my head what i can forward plan this, make sure I've taken more painkillers if I need them, make sure I bring my crutches because I don't always bring them out, um, and and prepare that way. So it's it's the, I think it's the assumption that, you know, oh, we're a venue, you're going to come and come in e either as a punter or a performer, and it's just, it, it's expected that you can make do, um, and unfortunately that's not always the case. Now it's all about, right, can I get in? Can I get by? Can I go to the toilet? You know, is there a, a train or a bus or a tube that's going to be able to take me back at the end of the night? Um, so I think you know that that's a thing that all disabled people I think actually have at the at the moment, and it really needs to be kind of highlighted. When I first started having mobility issues, I, I thought it was short term. You know, I was using crutches. I could get around fairly easily, and I was going to get better. Um, and then all of a sudden things were progressing, things were getting worse, and it's like, mm, maybe maybe better is not what's on the cards for me now, it's going to be my new, what my, I've always sort of said what my new 100% will be, and I want to be at that 
while I'm dating. I don't want to. And it was it was like I felt like I did. I felt like I was a burden sometimes. That you know. And again, it is down to pre-planning, going out, meeting places. Yes, I can come and meet you, but it has to be near a step-free tube station or a bus stop. I need to be able to get in. And it, it, I just thought, oh, these people, you know, people aren't going to want the hassle. So I kind of backed away from it for a while. Um, and then I, you know, I, I had the realization that no, why should I have to back away from from dating? I, you know, I like meeting people. I, I like dating. I like, you know, that side of things. Um, so I started to put myself back out there, um, but I had to be quite open about the fact that I had a disability. And I thought after a week of chatting away, you know, I didn't really want to turn up in a, a chair or a sick and go, surprise! <laughs> um, I probably wouldn't have got away with it. So uh, it, it just was open about it, but then it was, all of a sudden there was a, a bit of a seedier side to things. And you know, there was a lot of people out there, it, it was a bit of a fetish to date someone with a disability and some of the things that I was asked to do or things like that made me feel quite uncomfortable. Um, and I then became aware that that was actually a big thing within the disabled community, that you know there are people that like to fetish up, make us a fetish, you know. I've learned to love my body. It, there's enough of it to, to love. So, uh, and, and I, you know, and I do struggle with it sometimes. I, you know, I have scars, I have, bits and pieces on me that you know that don't look normal in other people's eyes um, but actually why should I be embarrassed of that or why should I be ashamed of that you know I think that's what really you know needs to be portrayed in the media that we are all different and they, they ask you know there are some campaigns that are out there that are sort of making the waves to, to change how people portray body beautiful um, but I think there's a lot of work needs to be done in including the disabled community with that. A lot of disabilities are not visual, they're not visible, um, and that needs to be highlighted as well. And actually there's, there's an awful lot going on inside that people don't know, so that needs to be portrayed as well. So it's like the body is inside and out, and actually we're all different, and we should celebrate that. And so yeah, the media has work to do to to get us more involved in that, I think, um, and and I think it, it it really is is something that needs to be started with with young people and work its way up, because if we can get the younger generations realising that everyone is different, everything is beautiful, um, then hopefully that will transcend up. Let's start with there. Let's start with advertising things, you know, the soaps, you know, with something to see people with disabilities on the soaps and it's not that they were, they were kind of exploiting them uh, for you know a storyline actually you're just a person that goes down the pub in your wheelchair or with your stick or with your cane or you know and that's it you know there's no or we've got to highlight the fact that they're disabled we, we've got to make sure that people are aware of that no let them just sit in the back and, and just be seen we all live our lives we are in the pubs we are in the cafes we are on the bus so actually let's you know let's be seen there are disabled people within the lgbtq plus community um we want to be seen you know we want to be in posters magazines adverts um you know there is always more that can be done to to make us a bit more accepted but it all you know again it all stems from sort of advertising and things i literally found out about parabride because i wanted to go to the rvt uh, for a different event they were holding. I hadn't been there for many years and I just had in my head, I said, I can't remember if they're step free. I was um, at a venue in Vauxhall and I said, I'm just gonna go and have a look. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, you're late, come in. And the doors were open to me and I went in and there's a wheelchair there. And there's another wheelchair there. And oh look, there's a BSL interpreter on the stage. And oh look, there's a load of deaf people over there signing. And, and, and there's some visually impaired people there. And, and I found my people. I, I'm here, I've arrived. That is genuinely how it happened. I had never heard of Parapride. I didn't know that was going on. And it was by pure serendipity, pure coincidence, I happened to, to, to come into the RVT that night. And I was like, I did not know nights like this happened. And, and as it happened, that was the first Parapride launch night uh, as a bit of a taster. And we've done many things and I'm glad, I'm so proud to be, to be able to be part of that community and, and help out and perform with you guys. 
Um, and I think that's what we need to do. We need to get ourselves out there, get into more venues, make people aware that we exist. Within the LGBTQ+, whatever you come under, under that umbrella, if you're disabled, you're part of us and we accept you. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, I'm the Wheel of Us. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, series of our stories by Parapride. I hope you like my story because it was, you know, especially for you. Anyway, you take care. We're going to see you real soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.